This is Andy Peroff, Boxing Social, and I'm joined by John Marko Joe Markowski of The Zone. Sorry about that one, Joe. Obviously out here in Saudi Arabia, ahead of Saturday night, Ruiz Joshua 2. Joe, what are your thoughts as we've edged ever closer to one of the biggest rematches of the year and one which has left people divided on opinion as to who exactly will be successful on Saturday? Yeah, I'm nervous, I'll be honest. I'm nervous for the outcome. I think it's a 50-50 fight. Um, it's the biggest fight of the year. I'm delighted that we're broadcasting it in the US. Um, yeah, so a few nerves on my side, to be honest, in relation to the boxing. From our perspective, um, sort of brings to an end uh, a, a long run of, 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 of top quality events, the, the fight season we put together. So looking to close that out successfully. Um, and yeah, all indications are that we're going to do that on Saturday night. Just talk to me about your relationship with Anthony Joshua. I know that he's isn't exclusively signed with DAZN, but you've hosted many of his fights, or all of his fights over the past three or four off the top of my head since you've launched. Well. That's the words I was looking for, sorry, Joe. Talk to me about that and the plans moving forwards with AJ. I mean, he is exclusively signed to DAZN in, in our markets um, for the fight this weekend. So we have a rolling relationship with him. We have a very good working relationship with him. I think we're going to sit down after Saturday night. Obviously, we're hopeful that he comes through that as the victor. And once that's done, we'll sit down and look to the future. But I think it would be a miss of anyone, Eddie, AJ, his team or us, to start looking beyond Saturday night. Because, let's be honest, it's a, it's a career crossroads for AJ on Saturday night. And he's got to get through that and stay very, very focused on that. He has been very, very focused on it. His training has been... I think st taken up a level in terms of um, sort of the time he's put into it and the, the severity which, which, which they're looking at this fight. So yeah, huge, huge moment for him. And then we'll we'll sit down and look to the future once that's done and dusted. I mean, I know you don't want to look past it, but provided he was to come through successfully, is there kind of going to be some type of plans or arrangements you want to try and put in place to tie AJ down to a longer term deal with DAZN to host more than just like maybe a rolling type deal that you have in place? Yeah look I mean we've always said and we're on record as saying that we're, we're huge fans of AJ we see huge upside in the, in the fights that, that are there for him if he is to come through Saturday night um, we all know what fights we're talking about right on, on both sides of the pond so um, we want to work with him absolutely the intention I think is there from us Eddie, Matchroom and, 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 and Team AJ. So, as I say, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that at the right time. This week is not the right time for that. Um, no one's talking about long-term contracts now. Uh, we're all focused on, on Saturday night, or in our case, Saturday afternoon in the US. I was speaking to Johnny Nelson yesterday, and Johnny admitted that in his, his eyes, AJ is one of the, not only the biggest stars in boxing, but the, one of the biggest reasons behind this resurgence of the following that boxing has had over these past few years. And largely takes a lot of the responsibility with regards to the amount of money that's been invested into boxing because of a brand around AJ etc do you agree with that do you feel that AJ is that highly thought of and he's responsible for not only the money but obviously the following I think definitely in the UK I mean let's be honest there's a resurgence of boxing probably started 2011 2012 ish AJ coming through the Olympics at that time obviously gold medal winner, highly marketable, charming guy, charmed the British public, and has delivered on that pretty much all the way through um, until, until June, right, in terms of you know, keeping a winning record. So absolutely a, a core sort of uh, part of that resurgence. In the US, we've still got work to do to build his brand. We're, we're doing that. We're investing heavily in that. Uh, but he's definitely right up there in the mix of a really interesting heavyweight division right which which is what captures the american public more than anything else in, in boxing terms so um ruiz aj the fact that ruiz has got you know american and mexican heritage is is uh definitely contributing to a resurgence in the heavyweight division aj is a huge part of that and um yeah we're we're, yeah, we're excited by what that what that brings in the future I mean, AJ's obviously always had pressure on him from the time that he turned over as a professional on the back of his Olympic success up until he won his first world title against Charles Martin. How do you feel he's going to go into the rematch with regards to that pressure? Do you think there's less or more on him without the world titles, knowing that he's now the challenger? I can't really answer that. I'm not, I'm not living, obviously, in the AJ camp. Um, what I can say is that I think, from our perspective, just, just as an outsider or as a partner looking in, the the sort of focus and the planning around this training camp just feels like it's, take, it's taken up a notch. I think he recognises and his team recognise that if he wants to continue fighting at this level, continue earning at the level he's earning at, you've got to win Saturday night. So there's a huge pressure 
Um, it's part of being a, a top tier athlete. It comes with pressure. Boxing, probably more so than anything else, because you're on your own and it's psychologically very demanding, physically very demanding. So, um, look, I, I think from his perspective, he, he, he'll be accustomed to dealing with pressure. This probably pressure has stepped up a notch, but I think his preparation has stepped up, step up, up a notch also. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll all find out Saturday night. Uh, and that's what makes this fight so intriguing. No one knows what's going to happen. Yeah. I know this obviously isn't going to be your area, but we saw AJ coming in with a leaner frame yeah. at the open workout. What, what do you make of that personally? Well, personally, I wish I had a leaner frame like AJ's. I'm sure Eddie does as well. Um, but I, I'm not. I'm not a uh, you know, strength and conditioning coach. I, I've obviously read what everyone else has read and seen what everyone else has seen. Um, I imagine he's wanting to you know free himself up to be slightly faster. Um, He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's a supreme athlete. He was in supreme shape, I thought, going into June the 1st as well. So I've never seen AJ turn up to a fight unprepared physically. No one has. So um, we'll see. I mean, it's obviously there's obviously tactics behind it. There's obviously science behind it. He looks fantastic. Um, by all accounts, he's, he's extremely confident. And um, yeah, I'm sure he's, you know, the preparation's been, been top notch. Just to move away from that fight, just talk on some of the others. One fight which kind of... It's, I imagine all fights will kind of slip under the radar because of what the headline fight is. But uh, Michael Hunter and Alexander Povetkin's a terrific fight. What, what are your thoughts on that one? I think Michael Hunter's an up and coming American heavyweight. We want big American heavyweight champions attached to the zone. We want big American names attached to all of the divisions that we're, we're, we're involved with. In the middleweight division, we are, you know, our stable of fighters is unmatched. If we can continue building something like that in the heavyweight division, that would be fantastic as well, because because they are the two divisions that, especially in the states, really resonate. So, um, you know, big fan of Michael Hunter, big you know, big fan of the fact that Eddie's brought him onto the zone platform. Povetkin, obviously, AJ's fight with Povetkin was our first ever broadcast in the US. So, um, yeah, he's a good partner as well. So again, another intriguing fight. Um, yeah, but it's it's great to see so many heavyweights. It's great to see so many Americans coming through. And Michael Hunter being, you know, one of those guys. So excited for that fight for sure. It's interesting you're touching on the heavyweights and the excitement around Michael Hunter. But with the heavyweight division, it's always widely regarded as the glamour division, one with the largest following, one with the most money, etc. I know again we're going back over, we don't want to look beyond Saturday but Saturday, but let's just say if Ruiz was to win on Saturday, PBC would have Ruiz with all the world titles and Deontay Wilder with the WBC world title. Is that a worry for you guys that you'd lose kind of your position in the market seeing that the heavyweight titles all being tied in with a PBC brand? Yeah, obviously it'd be preferable for us if AJ was to win. I think that's a pretty obvious statement. Um, yeah, look, I mean, th th there is there's lots of politics in boxing. There's lots of sort of the sides of the street, people call it. From our perspective, we're always going to be open to working with whoever it is, a different broadcaster, a different promotional camp. Um, we want to cut through the, the BS, basically, of boxing and make big fights happen. If, if our presence and our investment can help bigger fights happen on the zone or in a co-broadcast in some cases down the line, maybe. I've said a few times, we're open-minded to that. We're not sort of locked off and never speaking with the PBC. I've been emailing guys at the PBC today about various things, about sharing content. So we're not, we're not, we're not amiss to talking to these guys. We're not amiss to... Um, working with anyone else in the market. Uh, there's a few examples of us. Hooker Ramirez was, was, a, was a tie up with, with the top ranked guys, obviously. So, um, whilst it wouldn't be ideal for us, obviously, and we prefer to control more chips in the game, um, you know, we can't control it. It's sport. What will be will be. Um, the best man will win, and we'll see, and we'll, we'll make our business work going forward, whatever happens. Um, so, yeah, we're open minded on it. We're obviously coming in towards the end of the year now, only a few more weeks left until 2020. When you reflect over the year that you guys have had, how would you sum it up? Looking forward to my holiday of the new year, that is for sure. Um, busy year, as they always are with us. Um, I think we've learned a hell of a lot. I think we've achieved a hell of a lot. I look at a few sort of milestones in the year. I think Canelo Jacobs was the first sort of mega fight, if you want to call it that, that we put together. That was extremely successful for us in, in, in subscription generating terms as well as sort of brand awareness terms amongst um, especially amongst sort of Mexican American fight fans. I think Canelo Kovalev backed that up really successfully. I look at KSI Logan Paul too, which probably stands out for me as a, a really interesting moment in our year. Um, AJ Ruiz was a shock, but one that 
It took me probably 48 hours to get my head around. Actually, for our business, probably a good thing because it brings us here and it brings us to the biggest rematch in decades, the biggest fight of the year, you could probably say globally, and that's definitely resonating in the US as well. So um, I think we're sort of 15, 16 months into our US boxing journey. Personally, I've learned a hell of a lot. Um, I've had a few sort of bags under my eyes for most of it. But um, looking back and looking where we are in sort of, you know, just anecdotally, but also in financial terms and business performance terms, I'm really happy with where we've got to. So hopefully this weekend we'll sort of look to sort of close out the year with this and, and Chavez Jacobs. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go into Christmas sort of with a deserved holiday and refreshed for, for 2020, which is going to you know be equally as busy and equally as interesting, I'm sure. What's been the biggest difficulties for you yourself and your team to try and break into the boxing market? What surprised you the most about trying to push the DAZN brand? I think it's a sport that needs to organise itself better. We are trying to help organise boxing. Um, it's disparate. There are a load of different players in it. It's not like an, a normal sport where you've got rights holder who sells content to broadcaster. Broadcaster knows exactly what they're buying. They get a schedule from that rights holder and they know that the Premier League starts on the 15th of August, whatever it is. And you know that every week for 38 weeks you're getting 10 games. Um, in boxing, the sort of hard yard start once you've got a deal done. So we do a deal with Eddie and it's like, right, blank, blank sheet of paper, an amount of money to invest go and make fights, go and build narratives, go and market. Um, that's hard. And I think we've become much, much better at it. I look at the fight season campaign and the, and the sort of string of events we put together, um, sort of starting in September, going all the way through to the end of this month. That really encapsulates everything we've learned and everything we've tried to do. It's about organising boxing into a more sort of, more not bite-sized, but a more sort of clear picture like a season is, is, is the best way of putting it hence why we called it that so trying to do that is hard it's almost like a duck it, lo it looks great above the surface but beneath it's sort of like plowing away working very very hard so um, yeah that, that that's the hardest bit I think the lack of organization when you're trying to be organized and I think with our business model having fights scheduled in the future when you go into a, a fight weekend so that fans know why they should buy an annual pass or why they should retain their monthly subscription is is the hardest bit so what you'll see us do increasingly and we've done this at the end of this year but we'll do it again next year is say right here is four months of content bang that is a marketing message we'll put to boxing fans uh, and in doing so we hope to obviously capture more and more of them and we'll also in doing so hope to capture more casual fans bring them in uh, and keeping them as his own subscribers um, both with live fights and with original programming so um, yeah, we've learned a hell of a lot, but the big thing for me is continuing to drive organisation of the sport that, that fits our business model. When you announced your deal with Eddie, Eddie came out and he branded it this billion dollar deal. Were you happy about him releasing, not, not saying the, the figures etc, but were you happy about him talking about what was on table from the zone? Because on the back of that we saw other t television companies etc increase the amount of money that they was investing into boxing. Was Eddie releasing the details of the deal with yourselves a bad move on reflection? Did it make it more difficult for yourselves or did it put more pressure on you guys to deliver? What was your thoughts on it all at the time? Well, Eddie, Eddie only did that because we agreed a, a sort of communication plan together, right? So Eddie was, was behaving himself in, in that sense. Doesn't always behave himself, but <laughs> he does most of the time. Um, no, we're, we're, we're happy with it. We knew we were getting into a competitive market. The US is the most competitive sports broadcasting market in the world. It's unlike any other market anywhere else. I spent two years in Japan where there wasn't the same level of competition when we entered the market. The reaction we knew would come from ESPN, we knew it would come from Fox. We knew what we were getting ourselves into. So none of that was a surprise. There were reasons behind doing what we did when we announced it. And look, Eddie's been very successful in, in attracting big name fighters, both established and, and, and up and coming guys. Look at Devin Haney is widely hailed as the next sort of superstar of US boxing. Eddie's brought him on. Um, and as a new platform, as, in, as a new player in the market in, in DAZN and Eddie, um, yeah, I think we're very, very happy with how we've gone. I think um, we've got to, I've said this publicly before, we've, we've got to, and we are resetting certain things. I think certain costs got a bit out of hand from other parts of the market. We were 
you know, asked to pay for things that a broadcaster usually wouldn't pay for. So we've we've reset a few expectations there, and I think it's fair to say a few people were in the right place at the right time and have probably going into Christmas with a with a, the sort of like a few a few a few quid in their pocket. But look, we've 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 done that knowingly. We, we had reasons to do that, and we knew that going into a market fresh, especially one as competitive as this, you're going to have to pay a market entry premium at times. So um, that's done. Normality is sort of resuming. Um, and I look at the, the making of the fights in the fight season schedule. Um, that was done on sort of normal boxing business terms. So um, yeah, normality is settling into the market. It will continue to be a competitive market, which is great for the boxers. It's great for the fans because what it means is there's more money flying around. There's more fights being made because broadcasters are competing for the eyeballs of, of hardcore and casual fans alike. So um, that's, an, that's a good thing for the health of the sport. And uh, yeah, we're happy to be right in the middle of it. One thing which I do always see over social media or comments on our videos or when we do interviews with yourself, does own in the UK. Are there any plans to move into the UK to push out the brand over there? or Not yet. Um, look, we're, we're always looking at new markets to launch in globally. Um, we're obviously a British business. We know the UK market very, very well. We're not operating there currently. Um, we'll launch in any market at, at, at the right time where there's a opportunity to buy premium content, um, and when there's an opportunity that we we feel to, to make a business model work in a, in a, in a course of time that, that our investors are, are comfortable with, the UK is not uh, at the top of that list right now. Um, we're always looking at new markets, and 2020, I think you'll see us launch in a number of new markets. So we're always looking at that. Nothing to announce yet, and um, yeah, I'm sure your subscribers will hear about our, our market launches uh, as when we announce them. What markets are you are you looking into? Because when I speak to Eddie, Eddie talks about the launching in. Germany, Spain, Italy, etc. Where else are you guys considering? Well, Eddie's saying that because we're already in those markets, right? We may not have as, as big a boxing presence in Germany or Spain or in Italy, um, but they are established as own markets and they're amongst our biggest. Germany was the first market we launched in, in 2016. Um, Japan followed, I think, two weeks later. Um, Italy is one of our biggest markets. We've got a you know, domestic Syria A content there, three games a week exclusively. So huge market f for us. Um, and Eddie's sort of, what he's trying to do is obviously follow the zone around the world because he knows that we've got a great working relationship and he knows how we work and he knows what we need to be successful. So um, he's sort of riding on our coattails to a certain extent and, and, and good on him. Um, when we look at new markets from a zone perspective, away from boxing only, um, there's a strategy team in London who are doing that as a full, as a full time. Um, and there's various things we look at, availability of content, um, you know, willingness to buy OTT services like the zone, um, strength of the internet infrastructure, strength of passion for sport. There's a whole load of things we look at and our board, you know, review those those plans and those proposals pretty much regularly that, that drive our, our market launches. So you won't comment publicly on what we're looking at right now. Uh, but it's always it's always an, it's an ongoing process constantly, and um, yeah, we're excited about what 2020 holds. Final thing I want to touch on for delete issue off, Joe, because I know you're a busy man. Last time I saw you was in LA for KSI Logan Paul too. At the time, you said, "Look, if you understand yourself. Boxing fans weren't necessarily happy with it, but if you didn't want to watch it, don't buy it." What were your numbers like? How many subscribers did you pick up on the back of that? Yeah, well, I'm ha happy to say. I won't give you numbers, but lots and lots of real boxing fans watch that. And that did surprise me slightly. The percentage of our existing pre-KSI Logan Paul subscribers that watched KSI Logan Paul, and not just the Devin Haney fight and the Billy Joe Saunders fight, but the, the main event as well, um, was significant. So like a big, big percentage of our existing subscriber base did that. We also drove a whole load of new subscribers who obviously were looking to engage now with more content. So. Um, we are in talks with, with Logan, we're in talks with KSI, we're in talks with a number of people sort of in their world about making more events. I think the, the Jake Paul Gib fight is getting lots of heat on, online at the moment and it's great to see you know, platforms like yourselves and sort of real boxing journalists interested in that. That speaks to the engagement that this event had in November with, with real boxing fans. I think very few noises I've heard since have been, that was a disgrace, that was a mockery of the sport. It was probably one of the most entertaining fights on the card. It was genuinely competitive. Um, the guys trained extremely hard and professionally. They performed very, very well. 
Um, they both got knocked down. Um, and, you know, the result was the result. And we'll see what, 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 what holds for, for both guys going forward. But there's an appetite from both of them to continue fighting. There's an appetite from lots of their friends to, to fight on the zone because they've, they've seen the, the strength of that promotion, the scale of the marketing noise it made. I mean, this is public information. Our countdown show that we, we produced and broadcast on, on YouTube and social media uh, in, in, in the build-up to the, to, to, the, to the main event on Fight Night did 25 million viewers globally. And that is insane. I mean, there's very, very few boxing programs globally that do an audience of 25 million. So we've engaged a, we've sort of we've dropped boxing in front of this huge, highly engaged fan base who are digitally savvy. They love their sort of chosen heroes of their YouTube world. Um, and I want to serve them with more boxing content. Absolutely. Um, not going to work with any and every YouTuber or any and every celebrity. These people are going to take it seriously. You've got a genuinely competitive reason to be there and uh, a narrative that we can promote. Um, but yeah, it was a hugely successful event that attracted a huge number of global viewers in terms of build-up programming and, um, and the fight itself on Sky for us and for Fight TV. And I think it's whetted the appetite for us to do a lot more. So we're looking at that. Final word to yourself, Joe. 2020, if you could map it out perfectly and everything was to go to plan, how would the year look to you? Uh, I think two big chunks, two two big chunks of, um, of, of, of of fight season. So fight season two and three, I think you'll see us put together. I think two massive fights for Canelo Alvarez. Hopefully two massive fights for Anthony Joshua if he gets through this weekend successfully, as we hope he will. Um, and then a month-to-month -month schedule using our fantastic range of, of fighters with Golden Boy, with Matchroom, with Triple G Promotions um, to continue to drive our subscription base up and to engage fight fans in the way that we have done in 2019. Well, Joe, we will leave it there. It's brilliant to catch up with you. I appreciate you giving up your time. I know you've got a, a meeting now at half two, so I'll let you shoot off. But thank you for giving up your time, as I've said, and thanks for speaking to Boxing Social. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.